A Tale of Two Hygienists presents this week's tip episode. Quick and easy tips to keep you up to date and presented by the experts in the profession. Now, get ready for your unofficial tip episode. Hello, everyone, and we have a special tip episode this week. It's me and Andrew. Hooray! And we're going <laughs> to... And I wouldn't call this necessarily a tip episode. It's like a rant episode. The... It is a... A telesode. It's a telesode. We're going to tell you guys Andrew's journey. <laughs> yeah, we're going to... Uh, okay. So I I want to start off by being like, look, this is probably going to get me in a little bit of hot water. And if you have downloaded this episode, you've listened to it, and then later on you go back to find it and it's gone, it's because I got in trouble for saying these things. So Why would you get in trouble? I just have a feeling well, like, I don't know, either the... CDCA or the Florida State or um, Department of Health. Someone's going to get pissed about the things I want to say. I'll, I'll try and keep it. Well, I'll, I'll keep but, it nice. But I also, people get pissed off about things that need to be said. No one likes the truth sometimes. And our system is busted, broken, and dumb. Right. Right. Dumb. I, also, can I, can I apologize at the very beginning of this? I think I'm going to come off as really arrogant. And I don't intend it to be that way, you but are. it's just, it's, it's kind of like, well, we said on the episode, on the, the podcast all the time of, you know, like it, a uh, man-made borderline doesn't change people's teeth from three feet to the left to three feet to the right or three feet to the north, three feet to the south. So why would all of a sudden the ability to practice as a dental hygienist change? So I want to keep that as like our guiding star as we're talking about this. But a little bit of background for those who are kind of newer to the podcast, maybe just listen to, to a episode for the first time, like, who's Andrew? So I graduated in 2009 in Washington State, and I got my dental hygiene license. For those that don't, also don't know about Washington State, the scope of practice is incredibly large there. So as your basic license, as soon as you go to, through the programs in Washington and actually many of the Oregon programs as well, then you sit for boards, and the board is restorative. So doing fillings, both composite and amalgam are part of the, um, you know, anterior and posterior now I think are part of the exam. When I was doing it, it was posterior for both of them, but we could also do buildups. Um, we can do a lot of different things as, and temporaries, like all that stuff was in our scope of practice. We could also do local anesthesia. We had to sit, bo- sit for a board for that also. One was written, one was practical. Um, and, uh, but this is also part of our, our, just our basic education. So when you have, when you are a hygienist in Washington state, you're also a quote restorative hygienist, which I think is kind of a weird thing, but you know, that's a whole different thing. So I also then went and got my license in Oregon because I was working for a company that had offices in Washington, Oregon, and I ended up getting, uh, your hygiene license there, but then you had to have a restorative endorsement and uh, nitrous oxide and local anesthesia permits, I think is what they call them. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of add-ons to this thing. And then if you have those permits, then you have to do extra CE to be able to maintain those and this and that and the other. But oddly enough, not for the restorative part, which I think is so dumb, by the way. I think Washington and Oregon should have mandatory- That's crazy. Huh? That's crazy. I know. I know it's, it's one of those things that not a lot of hygienists actually end up practicing as a restorative hygienist. So I I don't think that they think that it's that big of a deal, but I think that that it should be because then maybe it'll make people want to do it more. And then if they're paid on production, they can make a lot more production. Anyways, a whole tangent. Sorry, I won't go down that one. So, um, and then as many of you know, I moved down to Florida in August of 2020 during this weird pandemic that we're having. I got a, a job offer as director of hygiene. So I'm director of hygiene at a company. We have over 100 offices, and my role there um, is a lot of teaching, training, mentoring, running the the numbers, making sure that we're in line with all of our KPIs and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's really fun. I really enjoy it. But one of the things that they asked me to do is go ahead and get a Florida license. That way, it I think when I'm sitting chair side with with a lot of the hygienists, and which I do periodically, I'll I'll be more uh, I'll be doing it a lot more as now that I have a license, but. Um, you know, there's some things that you just need to show them hands on right on a patient if they're not quite getting it, which again, Florida has a whole nother thing with laws. I, I mentioned this on one of the episodes before about how doctors from other countries can come in and be hygienists, even though they've never done any perio charting or any, anything like that ever in their career or their life. Um, they can be hygienists in Florida. It's, it's a weird, it's a whole different tangent thing. 
Um, and so, okay. So in order for me to get my license though, in Florida, I have to sit for another board exam. And that's kind of where all of this like ridiculousness is because in, to get my organ license, I didn't have to sit for another exam. They accepted the the board exams that I, I sat for, which was numerous. They accepted the school that did the education, which was rigorous. Um, and the scope of practice in Florida is actually quite a bit smaller with a lot less, um, a lot less ability to function without certain types of supervision. So in Washington, um, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have to have the doctor check our fillings before they walked out the door in Oregon. You did, which is still fine. That's just, you know, one of their rules. But in, in Florida, they have a lot of direct supervision laws, which I think is just bizarre also. So I had to sit for three other exams. One was the the state law exam, which I, I think is perfectly acceptable and should be continued right. um, because we do have just different scopes and different um, supervision laws. Um, also, I had to sit for what they call the OSCE. And I can't remember what that stands for. It's like objective something computerized exam and all they asked me on those ones and i can't say a lot of it because i sound like it's like non-disclosure thing but it was a lot of the same questions that i had on my national board exam and a lot of questions that if you've practiced at all in dentistry um they'll they'll show you a picture of like a, a pedo tooth and they just say which number is that or they'll say what's going on here and you'll be like well this is like a retained primary tooth or this is you know whatever the thing is and so like, it's super easy. I don't know exactly what my score is because I didn't, they said just you pass 75 or above. I feel pretty close to like I aced it though. Like it's not, it's really easy. The one that I have a problem with is the practical, the one you sit for. And, um, you know, many of you listening to this, if you didn't graduate during the pandemic, you had a live patient exam and you, you brought them and it was stressful and, Michelle hates this exam, like with all of her being. Yep. And, yep. <laughs> and, uh, and basically that board has to, or that patient has to qualify for the board. And then you, you do the the practical and then the examiners come in and check to make sure you were able to, to clean the teeth properly. Okay. So during the pandemic, however, because we're reducing aerosol generating procedures and we're trying to do everything we can to keep the, um, the spread of disease. diseases to a minimum. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Um, <laughs> and so they're like, okay, we're going to do mannequin exams. And mannequin exams, I said, perfect, because I don't know anyone here in Florida. This is going to be so great. And the governor did um, an executive order or something or a proclamation or something like that so that they could, um, we, we could do it on uh, our practical on a mannequin up until a certain time, which I just found out they extended that time. Um, so, which is good. Except for the mannequin is a plastic tooth son of a gun that I really hated. It is mm. so not even like like our real life exam. So uh, I've said this on the podcast too. I feel like I'm just repeating a lot of the things that I've said in the past years, but this might be new for some people. When I practiced, I used um, uh, American Eagle sharp and free instruments. I love them. They're so sharp and they stay sharp for me for quite some time. And so... I had recently purchased some last uh, last year, end of the year before, maybe like in December 2019. And then I used it for a few months and then the pandemic, right? And so um, these ones were incredibly sharp and all I felt like, and I, I, it's hard to describe the feeling of what this fake calculus was, but I, mm-hmm. I think it was... Uh, if you can imagine, I, mean, I, I think if you've tried anybody who's been in school or is teaching knows this calculus because it's on all the models now. Is it? It's yeah. like gooey. It it felt like a hot glue gun had been dabbed onto oh. this plastic model and um, a little bit it, it had set up. And so it was a little bit harder than like what the hot mm-hmm. glue would end up being like for like the the pre melted glue like it's a little bit harder than that but not significantly so and so like when you're scraping mm-hmm. it off it doesn't come off as like a chunk of calculus like you're used to um or as kind of like a, a rock like structure so anything that's 
that's that feels that way. It doesn't feel like that at all. And so you had to do like a detection area. You had to do a removal area. And you could see this black stuff kind of coming out. But like when I touched it with my glove and I tried to feel it between my uh, forefinger and my thumb, mm -hmm. it didn't have any sort of like um, crystalline structure at all. It was very frustrating. Yeah. Well, what I found frustrating about this whole thing, well, outside of what the hell, like you are a practicing clinician mm. in a state that has a much bigger scope of practice, like you mentioned. And the fact that you would ever have to bring a patient, because this is where I see, you are a practicing clinician up until, you know, the pandemic, obviously. And if you had moved, you would have been practicing up until that moment, mm -hmm. seeing a bazillion patients a week because you were a crazy person. Right. And then to leave and go to Florida and be forced to take this exam again. However, on the flip side of that, let's say somebody left the country, let's say a spouse was deployed and they kept their license in whatever state, didn't practice for five years, but could still come back and still see patients. Mm -hmm. Like it make it make sense, y'all. It does not make any sense. And for me to like, I totally agree with you with like the jurisprudence, the the legal stuff, the ethics. I think I think a few practitioners could be reminded of some ethical <laughs> situations. I think that's totally fair. Mm -hmm. I would even say maybe a little. Even though the whole idea of taking anything near a national board gives me so much PTSD, I can't even <laughs> handle it. But I, I would even call that fair. Yeah. Maybe even some newer things like here's a study guide of the things that we're going to touch on. Going back to the old school, like national board seems dumb too. But mm. like, let's bring up some new, like let's talk antibiotic stewardship. Let's talk about like the ADA saying we need to do airway assessment. Mm -hmm. Here are the things that we are doing these days, right? Just in case you had a lapse. Yeah, yeah. But to bring a patient or do a mannequin seems, it makes me want to scream into a void. Yeah. <laughs> or I feel like I am screaming into a void when we talk about the regulations in dentistry. So I haven't even really even gotten to like another layer of the frustration that I have, which is uh, now I yes. have to have a Georgia license. And so the Georgia license doesn't accept the CDCA exam that I just sat for, that I paid $1,000 for all of the exams, plus $1,000 in travel and all of that. Makes me want to rage. <laughs> but now I have to pay. So there's two paths for, I think for many states, and one of them is you, know, you can do it by credentials or you can do it by exam. Uh, and so- with mine, I have to add, I have to tabulate all of my hours to make sure I actually qualified for the thousand hours with the pandemic. I think I did. It's it was very close, and so um, but uh, uh yeah, there's like some volunteer hours I have to look at too and see if those count or any of the other kind of stuff. So, anyways, so um, so the interesting thing is they don't take the Reb or the CDCA exam. They take credits and only credits. And so if I don't have the hours that I need, then I have to sit for another exam. And it essentially is just the one, like the practical part of it, which I just passed. And this one, they don't have the mannequin. And they don't BT dubs, you are a credits examiner. Oh yeah, by the way, this I'm a is credits the irony examiner. That, yeah. Too. This this is the yeah. part that <laughs> yeah. you should just automatically be like, oh, he's uh, an examiner? Done. Yeah. You should pass all of them. Yeah. <laughs> just automatically. That, I, I I I should. And so, um, so there's a lot, anyway, there's a lot of frustration there. So if I, here's the other thing though, it's like, if I, even if I do qualify with my hours by, so by credentialing, I still have to pay a thousand dollars to get this done. Plus like 65 here, 45 there for all the like background checks and all these little things. I'm going to end up spending almost $4,000 to get licensed in two States probably. And I think to me that that's the most ridiculous thing out of everything is, um, I, I I hear people. I I don't think that portability should be just a lawless. Like everyone should be able to practice everywhere. Right. I don't think so. And and I have a hard time because Washington State, it, they kind of screwed me over in the fact that um, 
in a, I don't know, they didn't really screw me over. I love Washington State. But the fact that the license is all encompassing, all inclusive as a basic license doesn't allow for it to be kind of broken down into subsets. But I also don't necessarily want it to be because I feel like the people that were pioneering this in the 70s that have been doing this for what, almost 50 years we've been practicing a certain way in the state. I don't think that we should take a step back and be like, okay, now we're going to uh, detangle all of the different scopes of your practice and kind of, I, I feel like it's a step down in what your scope is. And so you're essentially giving the dentist or the powers that be the ability to pay you less for doing, you know, um, a component of the job rather than having all encompassing and keeping our wages high. So, um, so that's part of it. But at the same time, we do. I, I do believe in portability in a certain sense. So like my local anesthesia thing should transfer to Florida, um, but Georgia doesn't have it the same way. So I still think I should still be able to do that in Georgia. And so that's where yeah. that's where all the, the problems are really going to lie. It's a money grab. And I dare somebody to try to it's convince a power me otherwise. Grab too. I think it's, it's a power grab. It's a money grab. I mean, down. for you to spend that much money, and let's be honest, like dentist, yes, hygiene. You go. I mean, setting aside my frustrations with how we set our degree up for people, it's only two years, and you can make all this money and clock in and out. Putting that aside, we do go for two years. We make a decent salary. However, there's a lot of other things that happen that don't allow it that still can force us to live paycheck to paycheck as practicing mm -hmm. clinicians right mm -hmm. um especially if you're the breadwinner and you have children like it's hard and then to be like okay i want to move for a better life <laughs> or whatever the reason you can't even afford to go get the license there mm -hmm. it just it baffles my mind and i took serta so i think i'm only in five states allowed so was serta used to be nerb or is that even different no that was sir it's, so, i think it's still serta so oh it's still with an s s r t a yeah right? s yeah so yes yeah, so you have serta you have cdca which used to be nerb which is like the northeast regional board and then you have reb which is the western and then you have central or credits so yeah, just so bizarre. Just just the most bizarre thing. But if you're a dentist, I mean, I don't think I think Florida is still a little bit weird with the dentists, but dentists can go anywhere because their scope of practice is almost the same anywhere. I like, I think it's, that's it's so ridiculous. And yeah. if you've followed us for the entire time, then you know that we ultimately we want to have some reciprocity, some ability to travel mm -hmm. over the country. However, we also both agree that the education and I, I don't, I don't even understand how we're we credits or no cert. Wait, what is it? No coda. How coda calls one state and like, let's say a dental hygiene school in Texas and compares it to a, a dental hygiene school in Washington. And they both get accredited under the, like it baffles yeah. my brain. Yeah. But our education and our regulate and, and what happens in each one of the schools in our hygiene programs, they, those should be the same across the board mm -hmm. without question. And they're not. So look, I like, I, we love to complain. First of all, I passed all my tests. <laughs> like that wasn't, I don't Congrats. know that that was necessarily, uh, I was a little bit concerned about the plastic thing because you couldn't turn the head left or right or up and down. And like you had to manually close the mandible to make the suction thing work, which I think was so bizarre. Um, there's a lot of things. I, I'm pretty sure I gouged the crap out of that, the plastic teeth, uh, but they still let me pass. So that's good. But again, you passed based on how well you can pull calculus off of a tooth structure, right. which is the la least little bit of things that we can do as dental professionals. And right. that I think is what, you know, even if you were took an exam where it was like, let's talk about, you know, outcomes. You've been practicing dental hygiene long enough that you should be able to give me a treatment plan and explain to me a Canberra risk assessment and how would you create a good outcome for mm -hmm. this patient. But that's not it. That You are still judged on scalar in hand. How can you screw up this tooth or not? Which is... Ugh. Well, I mean, and that, I guess that's the thing though. So, and, and I'm not really sure that it's said enough, but on all these board exams, 
what they're looking for is, quote, minimal competency. Like that's literally the words they use to make sure that you're the most basic of hygienists that can not almost not even hurt somebody. Like it, you can at least one time in your career safely scale a quadrant or however many teachers are supposed to do without hurting somebody. Cause otherwise if you did, you have these too many lacerations or whatever you get, you'd fail the exam. But I mean, that's, it's minimal competency. That's what the boards are there for. And surprisingly, they still catch about two to 3% of the population fail, like fail. Like it'll never, ever, it doesn't matter if they switch different board exams, they just fail. Like they still don't get that part of it. So I, I, st- I'm not really against the board exams. I think that, I think we need board exams still, but I think they I need am. to be expanded into what you're talking about, Michelle, where it's like, hey, here is yeah. part A. <laughs> Let's talk about C, B, C, D, E, F, G, Q. Right. I think the, well, my take has always been that it is a very archaic system that does not create clinicians that right. actually make change in patient habits and prevention. And however, what I can, I guess, compromise or concede on is that our education system needs better calibration so that no matter what we are creating minimal, minimal competency within scaling technique mm-hmm. ab- without question. And that there's none of this like, well, they barely pass. They got a, ba- they got a 75 and now C's we get we degrees, buddy. humans out in the world. Like that part I get, like we need <laughs> more calibration. Um, my favorite was they don't put grades on resumes. Oh yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> I don't put grades, even though I put mine all over mine. Do you really? Take it all. Well, I mean, I put my um, uh, magnum culata or uh, what are them? What what are them? What are them? I what are them? Their degrees. Uh, yeah, summa cum laude, magna. <laughs> the Magna Carta, I think, was the document. Which ones? I always forget which one is. Because <laughs> you're so old. Which, I always forget which one's highest. Um, I don't know. I feel like summa <laughs> might be. But anyway, so, okay, oh, so. No. No? Yeah, summa cum laude. So I yeah. put summa cum laude on mine because... Okay. Damn, she can't say it, everyone, but she puts it on her resume, so that's the only thing that matters. <laughs> well, that's a story of my life. <laughs> uh, so if you <laughs> if you made it this far into the podcast, so I, I, I definitely don't want to be someone who just complains about something and doesn't have a plan. And I've talked about this plan for years. This isn't a brand... It's on my blog for a, like a long time ago. Um, there's many ways to do it. I am personally one that does like uh, either regional or grouping of states and having that portability between certain states like Washington and Oregon, if you've taken the same exact courses. So a lot of the um, a lot of the schools in Northern Oregon, and I think almost all the schools now in Oregon, teach restorative. They do all of these things. They should be able to get a Washington license as long as they sat for the same board exams. No, no problem. Our EFTAs have to take a board exam. So our, our high, our dental assistants that can place fillings have to take a board exam. I think that should be across the board too. all dental assistants. If you're placing any sort of filling restorative material, you should be taking a board exam for that. Um, and because it, and, and have an educational component and then the board exam and then be able to do it. Uh, none of this on the job training bull crap, but anyway, so the whole point was, sorry, getting back to the, we should have, you know, different tiers. I love a tiered aspect. And if you're in the lower tier, you work really hard. You change your educational system to mirror that of the highest um, of the highest tier, and then eventually you can make the the law changes necessary. But I think there's nothing wrong if you're in Texas. There's nothing wrong with learning how to do local anesthesia, even if you can't actually do it in when you get out of school. But if you learn about it and then they pass the law, then you can retroactively go back and say, okay, well, I take a board exam real quick and then prove that I can do it. Right. Boom. Now you're the same as all the other states that are doing local anesthesia. And then you can have reciprocity between all those states. Anyway, there's a whole plan in place. I have it. I don't want to bore you guys to death with it, but it's um, it's a so thing. do it. Don't talk about it. Be about it, Andrew. Well, look. I mean, make me. <laughs> Never mind. I don't. I don't want to say what I want to be. I don't. You give me the power to do things, listen, and I will do things. Y'all, I promise you, when I win the lottery that I never play, I will buy the ADA, and I am going to fix some things. You're gonna buy the ADA. 
Yes. It's like a billion dollar industry. And you're like, I know, I'm, I'm going to win a billion dollars. Okay. Listen, it's happened. I mean, and one time. If I, I win the lottery, okay. I am going to buy them and I'm going to run it. Okay. And we're going to really do prevention and we're going to fix the system. I would. It's all money based. Can, it's not like power based. It's not legislative uh, changes. Can we start money. a DSO and then it. I want to run a DSO? And we'll do all the things that you want it to be. The ADA is going to be a very costly um, purchase. So I don't know if I'm going to have enough money left I over. I only need but like $100 million or so. That's okay. A lot. We'll talk You're about this another time. Asking a lot. I can make you president of the ADA. How about that? I'm sure all of our dental friends listening to this like hate that idea more than anything. Why? We have no beef with them. We just want the I hygiene. Know. I don't know. I just want hygienists to have some ability to actually go and make a difference in the profession, in I oral know. health, and access to care. Like you, mm. but and the fact that I can't go anywhere else, and I'm not spending four thousand dollars. Like y'all can, that just ain't happening. I'll get a, a volunteer RDH license somewhere. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, also, here's another thing, though, I, I do want to say, because I, I feel really bad about how ranty I've been on this, like this particular, I've been kind of negative. This deserves a rant, though. This it is doesn't. so beyond ridiculous I am, that I it am needs, more need to vent about it. centrist in the way I think. Uh, um, I, so the ADA, I've really come here, actually, as much as they keep us down, they actually do quite a bit of good. I've been doing a lot of research into some of the things that they they actually do, and it's actually quite amazing. That's great. I'll keep that going. I know. Yeah. I I just don't want to throw like was it throw the throw out the baby with the bathwater or whatever? Like No, it's fine. I'm just gonna run let's it. Let's keep and... the baby throughout the bathwater. And then And I'm gonna hire people that are really going to help improve oral health. Mostly by giving hygienist <laughs> the role, the access, the scope of practices that they need to go out and Make some changes. Yeah. So if you want to be a part of Michelle's master plan, it's Michelle at a tale of two hygienist.com. Let her know what position you are applying for. And then send me your lottery tickets. Oh yeah. That too. We'll do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm done ranting. Have the I think dollars. that's enough of, okay. it's almost 30 minutes. People, do, people are done. I know this is a very long tip episode, but it's been a very interesting journey. Um, and I mean, every time that you called and told me about this, I was like, you cannot be serious. Like, this is a joke at this point. Yeah. It's it's horrible that you would have to do that. And wait, what was it that like one of the one of them wouldn't take a mannequin? Yeah, Georgia won't take a mannequin exam. But also but Florida won't take a mannequin exam except for they had the proclamation that said during this small little window, we'll actually accept it, which was supposed to so end what, in March, end of March. What happens when you graduate right now from a state that has a mannequin and it, can you go to Georgia with any other light or under no, credits? No, you have to do- no, credits, with, right? Yeah, with credits, you have to do a live patient with credits. But if you did a mannequin so with credits or a mannequin with CDCA for Florida, as long- so. As long as you took that exam during that same time period, the board will honor that. But if you took if you took it after the time period, they're not going to honor it anymore. So currently, if you are graduating with and doing a credits exam on a mannequin, you could move to Georgia. Mm -mm. Georgia's not no. no mannequins whatsoever in Georgia ever. No, not like, even time again, period. make that make sense. You are graduate. Like, so my students at my, at the college that I teach at occasionally are doing mannequin credits exams. Yeah. They wouldn't have reciprocity in Georgia. Georgia. You give me a headache day in and day out. I just need you to do better. Okay. Okay. But also Georgia, let's be friends because I want to get my license. So don't get so pissy at the words so that I can still get my license. But you would be able to get. Uh, I have to yeah, sit for another board exam. Uh, yeah, there's just too many things. Let me just pay some money, Georgia, or just grandfather me in. Like, I'm a good guy, everyone. Like, I, I'll, I promise I'll not hurt anybody. I'll only do good things. You do all the CEs. Oh, my gosh. Yes. So many CEs. All right. Well, hopefully, well, congrats on uh, the re passing the most ridiculous dumb exam. Thank you. Thank that you. That you decided to do. 
Thank you. Waste of money. We could have gone someone somewhere mm-hmm. spectacular. Yep, true. Um, and just taking all the opportunities luck. out of my kids' lives, but you know, no big yeah, deal. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, they won't go to college. It's no, fine. It's, yeah, food out of their mouth. They're starving right now because we can't afford it. But yeah, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. It's for the the whoever needs the money. They need to be bigger. Yeah, yeah. they need more money. Yeah, I screw agree. your kids. All right. Well. Sorry that it was so long, but I hope that, um, well, I, honestly, if you guys have gone through any of these, uh, have had this experience, let us know. Like, we want to hear what your experience is. Um, and I think that just calling attention to how absurd it, it all is, uh, is very important. And I don't think we're going to fix it by ranting, but definitely telling the world how stupid it is, mm-hmm. is a, a good first step. Absolutely. And also put me in power so I can create the change that'd be great thanks guys the ADA for me okay well we hope you guys have a great week and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button toodles <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this week's tip episode be sure to reach out to our guest experts and let them know how helpful their tips were follow a tale of two hygienists on facebook instagram and head over to a tale of two hygienists.com and subscribe to our newsletter you can also email us at a tale of two hygienists at gmail.com and keep listening for more awesome content from your unofficial dental hygiene podcast <laughs>